Okay, so this is the next part of the total response example number two that we're working through. In the previous video, given the uh, um, circuit diagram, we were able to come up with a differential equation that described the system, and we were also able to derive the other initial conditions that we needed. So now we're ready to start working on the next part of the total response solution, which is finding the zero input solution. So if you recall from the previous video, this was the differential equation that we came up with. To find the zero input solution to this differential equation, I just need to find the characteristic equation, which I can get by just looking right here and replacing all the d's with lambdas and then setting it equal to zero. This actually factors nicely into lambda plus one times lambda plus two, which I can look at by inspection and find the characteristic roots of lambda one equal minus one and lambda two equal minus two. So these are the characteristic roots of my system which means my characteristic modes, since these are unique, is just a linear combination of e to the lambda t's. So my characteristic modes are e to the minus t and e to the minus 2t, so I can form my zero input solution as a linear combination of those two terms. What I need to do now, obviously, is solve for c1 and c2 using the initial conditions that we derived in the previous video. Those initial conditions involve the derivative of y0. So let's go ahead and take the derivative here. Taking the derivative is easy. We end up with this equation right here. So now let's go ahead and plug in. At time 0, if I plug in t equals 0 into this equation, e to the 0 is 1, so I just end up with c1 plus c2. And we figured out what the initial condition was for this. It was equal to 0. So we know that c1 plus c2 are 0. Also, if I evaluate the derivative at time 0, replace all the t's with zeros here, I end up with minus c1 minus c2, and I know that this is equal to a negative 5 from the previous work that we did. So I now have two equations, two unknowns, just need to solve for c1 and c2. This one's pretty easy. If I just add these two equations, you can see what's going to happen. The c1's will cancel out, and I'll end up with minus c2 equals a negative 5, which means that c2 is equal to 5. And if c2 is equal to 5, going back to this equation and solving for c1 means that c1 must be minus 5. So I've now solved for the zero input solution to the system, and it is equal to this equation right here. So that's one part that we need. All right, next piece. Let's figure out what the impulse response of the system is. If I want to know the zero state response, I need to do convolution with my impulse response, and I don't know what the impulse response is right now. So let's go ahead and solve for the impulse response. Here's the equation that we can always use. The impulse response of a linear system described by a differential equation can be found by evaluating this equation. Recall what our differential equation was. I'll just recopy that down right here. By looking at this, we figure out that this is a second-order differential equation. So n is equal to 2. Since n is equal to 2, that means I need to come over to the right side over here and find the coefficient on the d squared term. Well, there is no d squared term, so that means that bn or b2 is actually equal to 0. So I'm actually not going to have this term because the b coefficient is equal to 0. Some things that I know based on the conditions for yn, we know that all of the initial conditions are zero except for the n minus one derivative. Since n is equal to two, n minus one is one, so that means the first derivative at time zero has to equal one. All other quantities related to um, yn at time zero are equal to zero. So these are the two initial conditions I'm going to use to solve for the form of yn of t. Y n of t has this form. How do I know that? I know that because y n of t is always a linear combination of the characteristic modes of the system. On the previous slide, we solved for the characteristic modes of the system. They were e to the minus t and e to the minus 2t. So I just need to take a linear combination of those characteristic modes. I use k1 and k2 because k1 and k2 are going to be a little different than c1 and c2 because y n of t has slightly different initial conditions. So let's go ahead and figure out what k1 and k2 are. So like I said, these are just a linear combination of the characteristic modes. Let's go ahead and figure out what k1 and k2 are. If I take the derivative of yn of t, I get this equation right here. And now we can go ahead and start plugging in time 0. If I evaluate yn of t at time 0, I get k1 plus k2. And this has to be equal to 0 because of our initial condition. 
So that's one equation, k1 plus k2 is 0. If I evaluate this equation at time 0, I get minus k1 minus 2k2, which we know has to be equal to 1 because of this initial condition. So now I have two equations, two unknowns. These are solved easily again just by adding them. See how the k1s will cancel. And I get minus k2 equals 1, which means that k2 is equal to a negative 1. Plugging back in here, we see that that means k1 has to be equal to 1. So I now know what those unknowns are, and I now know what yn of t is equal to. It's equal to this equation. And now I'm ready to go plug back in here. I need to compute pd y of t. So let's go ahead and do that. pd y of t is, so pd is right here. It's just equal to d. That's just d y n of t, which means just take the derivative of this. That's easy. That's minus e to the negative t plus 2e to the negative 2t. The minus 2 comes down to that minus and makes it a positive 2. So I now know what this term is. I know that that is 0. All I need to do is plug in to my final equation, and I know the impulse response of my system. h of t is equal to quantity 2e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative t times u of t. So that is the impulse response of my system. In the next video, we'll actually take this impulse response and involve it with the input to find the zero state response of the system, and then we'll tie the zero state and zero input response together to get the total response.